Welcome to the IDC5 software navigation training video. In this video we're going to talk about how to navigate the IDC5 software once connected to a module. Once connected the first screen that you will come to will be the fault screen. Here's where you're going to get your fault code information. Notice the color triangles on the left side of the screen. There's three different color triangles that you will see. One will be a yellow triangle with the letters MEM. That is indicating to the operator that this is an inactive fault code. Another fault code color you'll see will be a red triangle and the letters ATT. This will indicate to the operator that this is an active fault code, a code that is currently an issue. And last, you will see a green triangle in the letters STO. That will only occur after clearing the fault codes, and this is indicating to the operator that that fault code has in fact been cleared. Now that we understand the fault code indicators, let's talk about some of the functions on this particular screen. The first icon we have in the lower right is the help icon. Anytime this is highlighted blue, you can highlight the specific code or parameter, click the help icon, and it will give you some helpful information. The web help icon and the tech documentation icon will not be used on this specific program. If we highlight a specific code and we notice that the 123 asterisk is now highlighted blue, that's indicating to us that there's some freeze frame data that we can view. The freeze frame data is a specific set of parameters that the OEM decided was important to view when the fault code was logged and became active. These are all going to be OEM specified parameters. If we highlight a code and the component wiring diagram icon is now highlighted blue, that will give us access to Texas wiring diagram schematics. This is the error clearing function. By using this, we can clear fault codes that are inactive. This is the diagnosis recording icon, which will take a copy of all the codes that are currently displayed on the screen. And this is the print function. This will allow us to print a copy of all the codes on the screen. Now, if we wanted to get specific DTC information, all we would have to do is double click the specific code that we wanted the information for. Now that we've double clicked it, we'll get the fault code information that we need. We will also get a brief description of the issue. This can be used in knowledge base or DTC solutions. The next tab we have is the ECU info tab. That'll give you hard written ECM information such as engine serial number, VIN number, engine type, total distance, fuel used, engine hours, and injector coating. This information can be printed using the print icon located here. Next we have the activations tab. This is where all of your testing and component actuations will be performed. If you want to find out some information about the specific test, highlight the test and click the help icon located here. This will give you test specific information. If I wanted to highlight another test and get some more information about that specific test, I'll highlight it, click the help icon, and from here you'll get a description of the test, the entry conditions or interlocks that must be met for the test to perform, and when to run the test. It is important to note that when performing tests under the activations tab that the descriptions and the components that are being tested will likely have differences across manufacturers and they will not always be identical in the software. The next tab will be the settings tab. Here you will find your DPF filter regeneration, your injector coating, And you'll also see after treatment sensor recalibrations. Other things listed under the settings tab will be parameters that you can adjust or change such as cruise control, PTO speed, and any other OEM parameter that can be modified. If you have trim files or IQA codes that need to be transferred, you'll use the exchange manager located here. Notice the web lock icon here. This just indicates to the operator that they need to be connected to the internet in order to make changes to this specific parameter. The next tab that we're going to go to is the parameters tab, also known as live data. 
These are specific engine parameters and their actual values. You'll notice here that these are all in numerical value right now. If I would like to see a graphical view, all I do is double click on the parameter that I'm viewing. Once I want to go back to numerical value, all you have to do is double click again. Under each value, you'll notice that there's a green number and a red number. Those are the minimum and maximums of that specific parameter. By clicking the min max icon here, that will reset all of those to nominal value. Using this function will allow technicians to make diagnostics on their own. Here we have the dashboard icon. This will give us a 2D graphical view of the particular system that we're working on. For an example, here we have the high pressure fuel system. You'll notice that it shows fuel flow, but it also shows specific readings of each sensor. And here you'll see we have the upstream fuel manifold to fuel injector. These are just some neat features that Texa has to offer. Next, you'll notice whenever doing diagnostics that there's a lot of parameters that you have to sort through. By clicking the filter icon here, we can manually select each individual parameter that we want to view. Or, we can use the search box here and narrow that down by keyword. Once we've chosen our keyword, we can manually select the parameters this way. Click the OK icon, and now we're viewing only the parameters that we want to see. If we want to go back to the full list, all we have to do is click the same delete filter icon. We also have the favorite parameters icon here. By choosing the favorite parameters tab, we now have pre-built sessions that Texa finds helpful for technicians during diagnostics. Here are a few examples. Now if you like, you can create your own by clicking the add feature here. Manually select as many parameters as you like, or use the text function. Perform your search, make your manual selections, and click the check icon. Now you'll enter the name of the list that you just created. Now we have a session that will be stored for future use, monitoring only the parameters we want to see. If we would like to edit that list, all we have to do is click the Edit Parameters value here. From here, we can remove or add parameters that we want to view. Another function of the Texa IDC5 software is the Dynamic Testing function. By clicking the icon located here, we can now install the TXT communication device on its own in the vehicle. This will allow diagnostic recordings to be performed without the computer pressure. Now the driver can run his route while the diagnostics are being recorded for later review. Follow these steps to set up your TXT box into dynamic test mode. Now that we know how to set up for dynamic test recordings, let's perform a standard recording next. To do so, you'll click the record icon located here. The recording will record only the parameters displayed in the screen currently. You can set the record length from 1 minute to 30 minutes in 1 minute intervals. For more information on dynamic and standard recordings, please proceed to the specific module. And this concludes the training. Please proceed to the next module.